Jet everybody and welcome to episode two after round one of the South NBL has wrapped up and we're going to talk everybody who showed up, everyone who didn't show up this week and there's been a few of those who talk injuries and updates with the Tawihi League as well. So let's talk some hoops. Big Tawihi news has arrived. Our inside guy Justin Nelson has all the details. We find out who the biggest <laughs> pets in South NBL are. Biggest pests? Not even a question. And we chat all things around the basketball globe. The island has its title. Kia ora everybody, we are about to dissect everything that happened in round one of the Sales NBL and there is a lot to break down. I'm Brooke Rusko, joined by the voices of basketball here in New Zealand and have been for a very long time, Andrew Mulligan and Casey Frank. Boys, uh, takes off after round one. What do you, what's your, your hot take after round one? Uh, round one is always disjointed in terms of personnel available, but what we saw is great growth for the bench units with the Rapid League introduction of the men's uh, side of this. I love seeing Rapid League change it up a little bit. Look at 48 points for the Giants in that Rapid League game. It was Ooh. great to see some of these younger players and some of the vets. If you look at the Tuatara, you got a, <laughs> you got Barrow out there, you got Ruben Fitzgerald, yep. some guys have played a bit. But exciting for them, guys who just haven't had as much time on the court, who haven't been able to apply their trade in front of their friends, their family, nationally on TV as well. So uh, great for that. My other takeaway was, how about them Saints? Oh, Woo! that looks like a buzzsaw. I got, I'm here with the Wellington Fan Club, but uh, they were playing quite well. Uh, looked like they were in mid-season four for a team who really just got together. Let's go to game one. It was the Rams versus the Giants down in Christchurch. And what did you guys think of the, the game itself? Obviously, the Rams get the win. Uh, Giants, obviously, it's hard with the whole personnel isn't completely yeah. here just yet. Dan Fosu just got here. Dan Greeter just arrived into town as well. They put up a good fight in their first, but second half, the defending champs showed why they're defending champs. You summed it up perfectly. And I mean, I, I watched that game and obviously I put a candle in the window and lit it for Hugh Bainan and, and Phil Jones <laughs> to take the L on that one. I thought, the, I thought the Giants, they've got room for improvement, but I thought the Rams, gee whiz, Judd Flavel, <laughs> at, speaking of coaching, he is, he is going to be a, a, a heck of a coach when it comes to going to Cal Stadium and trying to take an L, uh, trying to take a W off them. Well, a testament to the depth they've built, to the program they've put together with all these youngsters coming through and developing and really playing well. Kai Isaac, uh, Aiden Tong, uh, the, the, even, even uh, Kai Isaac's little brother, you know, like, like uh, they've all come in and played quite well. A testament to that depth. Uh, but uh, he, they didn't have three starters. Max Darling had an issue with the rim, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what your problem was here, Max, but I love to see this. Why? Back on breakers, he had an appointment with the rim. Look at that. Look at that. Take it down, Big Max. But why Why have they got the shot clock so high? <laughs> so you can see it. But also, <laughs> that is that is strength. Woo! Just like, pulls it down. That is like, that's Shaq against the Suns early on. That is him pulling it down in New Jersey. Remember those days? I, I definitely Orlando do. Magic Hang on a little longer. I definitely do. I, I, Remember that? I, and it, like, the, the whole stanchion gave way? He's, that's a big boy. Hang on a little longer. There you go around the world. But it's inc incredible to see Max back. Had obviously a big mm. season with the Breakers and he learned a whole bunch there. And a big win for them to start the season. Uh, speak, speak about starting the season. I want to give a big shout out to the Fire. Mm. It's their first game. They're playing at home. Crowd was good. They took on the, the Hawks. And, man, they, they look good. They, they gave them the business. They won by... It ended up being 21, but it, was, it could have easily been 24 if it wasn't for the Jared Kenny Heath. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm wearing this. Congratulations to the fire. I had them finishing last. I had the Hawks winning in my round one picks. Like, they came out, and Matt Lacey, congratulations, you did the job. That was the only highlight I can remember for the Hawks of that game. Uh, they had a few others. They had a few others. Yeah. Keanu Rasmussen played quite well. He's good. I like uh, him. Yeah. I, I think Josh Roberts is going to be a solid import. We'll see about Southern, how that works well. But... Uh, I really appreciated the way that Fi came out. Had a great presentation that first night. I was mm -hmm. down there commentating from the sidelines. So it was a really great atmosphere and nice to see that come to fruition. Cruz Pro Hunt looks the business. Yeah. And you have to celebrate. So shout out to the boys for doing this one. But Matt Lacey, head coach, congratulations. But he got the business after the game. Check this out. Yeah. Only one way to celebrate. A lot of the guys in that locker room, he's coached since they were young fellas at Rosmany. You know, he's, got, he's built great relationships with players across the country as a developmental guy. Now getting his chance uh, on the big stage. Uh, and you can obviously tell his players like him. Well, that's, that's the point, right? You've got to build a culture. That's important as well, because both of you guys were massive culture guys when you played in the NBL. Casey, of course, you, you did everything the coaches asked of you. And Brooke, <laughs> obviously, um, being the guard that you were, 
What are you laughing at? I, I, I agree. Absolutely. I agree. There's laughter. No true words have ever been spoken. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it, guys. Hey, speaking of Casey, it was a team that you played for, the Wellington Saints, and boy, did they show up in game one. They gave the two out of the business. And I thought, if I'm being completely honest with you, I thought the score was going to be the other way around. Yeah. I had the two Tata going 20 plus, and boy, did they look good. The Saints, uh, from the jump, showed that they mean business. They had uh, youth that came through on the show. Hiram Harris did his Ooh. thing, but this. How good did the Saints look? I came into that game thinking uh, this is going to be the game, not only of the round, perhaps of the year, even though it was round one, and obviously personnel are in and out as we go through the sales of the NBL season. But I, I was trying to work out what was going on here. Look, for, I had to text for, Harris yesterday. was going on. I had yeah. to text Casey yesterday and go, what was going on there? It, it just looked like a team that was well versed and, and well, well, well drilled to, mm. against a team that looked like they just got together. And speaking to some of the guys afterwards, I don't think the Tuatara are quite as deep in their planning of the season as they need to be. You know, some guys came in yeah. late, but that Saints squad was ready to go. You know, speaking to some of the guys in the Saints, Zico is already in mid-season mode. He is pushing mm. the tempo up from start to finish. There are no days off for vets in the Saints camp. One for the commentary crew, don't ask Zico close-ended questions. <laughs> You've got to make him talk. You cannot Open get him up. to go yes or no. All right? <laughs> but back to the player personnel. Ben Eyre played rotation minutes. He did. Hiram ha Harris came on as a wild he was cat. was amazing. You know, that, that's so important. Cam Glennon got spot minutes. Rob Lowe didn't play much in the NBL uh, in Australia as well. So just finding their mojo, it'll come. Hiram Harris as well. Just absolutely incredible. You see what a... He obviously had a huge season. And this is the thing that I love about Hiram, and I'll be completely honest with you. There was a point where, and I, I grew up playing with Hiram, that I thought the, the max you would get out of Hiram as a bench player mm. in the sales NBL. And boy, was I wrong. He was incredible for the Perth Wildcats. And he is going to be an MVP candidate if he continues to play like this. And I expect him to for the rest of the season. But he's obviously, he's a tall black, but he, he was also most improved player for the Adelaide 36ers previously as well. Like any situation he goes into, to, he takes it upon his shoulders to be that hustle and heart guy who will dive on loose balls, play defense, and get into the face of the opposition. I, and I used to think that same thing, but uh, to me, he's made an even bigger jump these last couple of seasons. What's so impressed about me is the way he thinks the game now. Yes. He's a re very cerebral basketball player, which is not something I think you could uh, expect most players to turn themselves into. He's learned how to read the game well. He takes now what's given. Like in this game, at first, he was looking to pass, try and get everybody involved. Suddenly, he's scoring bucket after bucket because that's what they're giving him, and he just reads it so well. He can be that glue guy, but he's showing that in the NBL, he can be something more as well. Without a doubt. So congratulations to Hiram. Hell of a first round. Uh, let's go look at the Giants and the Bulls game. And boy, do we have ourselves a nail biter. I thought the Giants did a good job of obviously recovering after the first game that they had. They go back home. It's a tough place to play down there. Yeah. And they had a chance. Dan Foster had two chances, put them up mm -hmm. one. Uh, they come back down, they get a bucket, and then he had another chance to win it. I'm going to run out of candles if I'm lighting these, uh, another one for Hugh <laughs> Phil and our commentary crew. But, I mean, that's the game that got away on them a yep, little yep. bit. You've got to protect home court. No matter what league, what level, you have to win at home. And the Bulls were loving the fact that they picked one up on the road. Uh, and, and a talented Bull squad that I think uh, were probably pretty fortunate to sneak away with that yep. win. Uh, to let the Giants cr come back and, and take control of that game. Just a absolutely phenomenal performance by Mohamed. Uh, the way that he played 34 points in 34 minutes, including Ooh. the game winner. You never know what you're going to get in this yeah. league. Like, you can, you look at all the YouTube highlights you want, but then you want, you need to see the eye test. And some of the eye tests... Can't fake the fun. You can't. And Mohammed, he passed the eye test really well. Boy, did he. And he's, he, he's not scared at the moment. You might have seen the meme going around of him staring at Colin Sexton. And I have not seen that. Was that, is that, is that him? him? Is that him? That well, he is him. At the free throw line. That, uh, I he remember that smoke movie. and I'm here for it. That's one of my favorites, especially because Colin Sexton really turns it yeah, around yeah, on him after right. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate the funk. I appreciate the, the flavor. He's got a lot of it. Hey, speaking of flavor, if you missed this dunk, this dunk was incredible in the Rapid League. Oh, you got to watch the Rapid because you got dunks like this from Caleb. Caleb, take him on, big boy! He went to the upper room. Took that elevator up to 15, dropped everybody else off at nine. That is phenomenal. Now, it's not quite Tom Chamberlain, Mark Jackson. Yeah, it's got that Tom Chambers feel. But that is, that is Tom, sorry, Tom Chambers. But that is like, you hit that body, right? I need to ask you guys, because I just pulled the mini tramp out at school. Okay, so that's the dunker. Let me take care of this. You yeah, have more time <laughs> than you think. You get up there and... 
I say this like I did this all the time, but you get up there and you have all the time in the world. You could take a picture and then you watch it back. You think, why didn't I do more with that? But as the time stops for you while you're up there. And he was the Westside uh, Blitz uh, preseason dunk camp champion as well. Had a dunk feud on their website, uh, on their Instagram over 600,000 times last time I checked. So. Get up. Hey, uh, if we ever need to know anything in the sales of NBL, there's one man who knows more than all of us, and that is Justin Nelson, the GM. Here's our latest updates. Well, big news for Tohi Basketball Aotearoa. Groundbreaking in so many ways. The women will be paid double what they were in season 22 and 2023. Remembering that when Tohi started, it was on the back of pay parity. So a huge pay boost for the women. Two other big announcements in Tohi. Expansion 2025. Two international teams set to join. Australia, Southeast Asia. Those regions being looked at at the moment. And starting from later this year the season will move open space october to december uncluttered a lot more attention coming the way of toihi basketball aotearoa huge announcements so much great news to come out of toihi this year justin joins us on the couch justin where do we start because great news across the board. Is it the money? Uh, is it the expansions? Where do you want to start with this bad boy? Well, I think definitely the money. That's the place to start. I mean, to start the competition with pay parity with the men two seasons ago and now to double that money for the women. It's off the back of commercial interest. So more sponsors coming in. The players are being rewarded. It's a huge move and maybe the only sport or competition in the world where we're talking about the women being paid more than the men. So it's groundbreaking. I mean, it's absolutely exciting too when you think about it and how well the, the sport continues to grow and that the commercial side wants to jump on board and it's the right thing to do and, and, and they deserve this and it's just a stepping stone once again. Well, I think it comes down to the fact that more money comes into a sport, you share that with the players and what we're seeing from this, uh, from this announcement is commercially the sponsors are coming in, which is a great sign and it's a great sign for women in sport right across the board. Yeah, it also means that it sits in a window where there's no WNBA, we're getting the opportunity to have a lot more talent come in. Obviously Europe is going on, but then it means that there's another professional league where eyeballs will be on, and that's important for not only fans, but scouts. But I also think for the players, the way that season will cycle into where changes are made at a higher level in Europe, and possibly even open up some opportunities for NBL1 for these players so they can play here, they can prove themselves, they can go on to a different level if their talent and their pl play has predicted that. Uh, just a great opportunity, I think, uh, most importantly for the girls themselves to be able to play at a high level, to be paid fairly for it at, at a point where they may not have to worry about working a second or a third job to try and get their basketball career going. It's, it's fantastic. It's definitely key. I mean, we're talking the money here on a pay scale across the world. Tohihi now has the chance to be a top five league in the world. Players are going to mm. come for this, there's no doubt about it. But importantly, Kiwis are going to get rewarded. We're going to see them progress and develop, be paid to spend more time playing and training on the game that they love, that they're professional athletes, they're elite. It's a win-win all around, no doubt. Does this mean that they're going to make more money than the boys? Well, the, what are we doing? It started as pay parity two years ago. So you do the maths and put it together. The answer is yes. OK, I'm here for that. I had to, I had to uh, let that sink in for a second, but it's huge. That is huge. And you, you make such a good point with our girls going to get so much better. You bring in the WNBA talent, there's only, you can only get better with the talent that is coming through. There he is, Mr. Iron Sharpens Iron. Yeah, well, 100%. You know, if, if the better the players you're playing against, the better your outcomes are going to be, especially for this next generation of basketball. Uh, certainly, it's going to help the, the women who are already professionals. But when you're talking about the wider training squads, the, the ladies who are on the Rapid League teams will be training every day yeah. against top flight professionals, understanding how to become a professional. I, I think the way this is going to lift the women's game in the next 10 years in this country is going to be phenomenal and groundbreaking. The other bigger announcement here is expansion in 2025. Yeah. Two international teams joining this competition. Now, at the moment, lots of conversations around Australia and Southeast Asia. Amazing. But the news is two international teams joining Tohi in 2025. I heard that Sky were going to pay for Team Jets as well. To, to, to <laughs> travel. Like, this is good stuff, Justin. Well done. Well, you're a trained pilot. Yeah, I can, I can certainly crash and burn. Don't start that rumor because I will have to deal with that rumor with players coming my way wondering where the private okay. jets are. Okay, so that's not happening. The jets. <laughs> no, definitely okay. not. But uh, just the fact that we're now going to be seeing and playing basketball through the Australasia or Southeast Asian region every week through the Tohihi season and those teams coming here as well. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, that's huge, massive. And, and there already is a lot of interest in basketball in that part of the world for a number of reasons. We, we have great follow through on our websites, on our social media platforms in Australia and in Southeast Asia, and this will just lift that. Without a doubt. Hey, Justin, thank you so much for coming through. Good Appreciate news. you. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Now, as the season continues, you get to know everyone a little bit better. You get to know the ins and outs with everybody, but also someone can be a pest on the team. There is always one, and if you wanted to know who, here's some of the candidates. Who's the biggest pest in the team and why? Biggest pest? Uh, you interview him in a couple of interviews, I, I believe, um, but put Carl in there. I'd say Carl in too. Just always on you, bro, you know, never never quiet. Uh, Dees is just, you know. I haven't noticed Carl being a pain in the ass at all. I'm not sure what the guys are talking about, so. He, he's the biggest pest. That answer probably has a few alleys you could go down. Definitely Jeffrey Thompson. Jethro Thompson. Jeff Thompson and our team. Uh... Tomingy. <laughs> Sam Dempster and Tomingham. Their comedy is starting to ripen like their bodies. It's James Matthews. Just because he just looks like a rat. It's definitely Campbell Scott. He's like, <laughs> that guy's a little mouse. <laughs> well, the biggest piece would be Simon Lafayette. <laughs> Simon. Oh, I have to agree with Simon Lafayette. Simon Lafayette. It's definitely Josh. Anyone that's still a teenager. Biggest piece. Not even a question. Ask uh, no question, no question. Kai is probably your front runner. Kai Isaac. Kai Isaac. Kai Isaac. There's quite a few of them, to be honest. <sighs> Cam Glidden. Probably Josh. Josh Ledger. Yeah. But also Rob Lowe. Ruben Fitzgerald. Asked for a ride to training every week so he could save some cash. All Lizzo. Probably a guy from his auto brother, but. Come on, bro, I know these breakers and Melbourne contracts are worth more than I've ever earned in my life. Hey, you take me to training, man. <laughs> but yeah, also Cam Glimmer, don't forget about that. He's a creep. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you I'll play with Ruben, and he has to be the biggest pest I have <laughs> ever played with in my <laughs> entire life. I promise you that, man. Uh, let's go around the room. Actually, let's do a three, two, one. Who's the biggest pest on the couch? Oh, oh, it's Casey Frank. Yeah, that's not even fair. Three, two, <laughs> that's not even it's fair. Casey Frank. We know how that's going to go. You guys are biased against me. We've worked with you for years. I mean, I, I, I can't really it, argue. It's, it. it's Casey, right? It's, yeah. It's, it's got that's why good. we love him. It's lovable. Oh, uh, okay. It's endearing. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. That sounds Love good. you, man. Thanks, guys. Well, speaking of being a piss, these guys were absolute piss in the side of Melbourne United all year long, and boy, did they show up in Game 5. They actually showed up all series long, except for probably Game 1. But congratulations to the Jack Jumpers, oh. who are the NBL champions for 2024, and boy, do they deserve it. In their third season, incredible performance. Uh, I think from Games 2 to 5, the total margin was 11 points wow. of the games, which is an incredible stat. Melbourne led for 62% of the series. When you think about that, it's incredible how well coached and drilled that unit and balanced. You said to me, I thought it was going to be 3-1 Melbourne. You said to me, I don't know, man, that's a balanced Jack Jumper squad. Well, they're just tough and they're physically tough. They go out, they bang, they throw things away. but. What I think really came through in the finals is that they're mentally tough as well. There was no deficit that was too big. They were in no position where they ever looked flustered. If it was good, if it was bad, they were just taking it, rolling off their chest and go. I, I love the way McVeigh played. Uh, d deserved uh, uh, um, acknowledgement of what he's done in the mm. finals and possibly lifting his play to get to a higher level. I mean, this is a guy that uh, Sam Vicini, uh, one, one of the one of the draft uh, Knicks uh, for, for the NBA that's based in Australia now, uh, he's been praising him, saying this guy needs to be on an NBA team. Yeah, he's got that kind of glueness, and the, his skill set really fits. But uh, I'm just so impressed with what Scott Roth has brought there. And you know, you mentioned it on Twitter a little bit of that Mick of Vicona flavor. I, I just the, the Mick of Vicona fingerprints are all over that because Scott Roth is the perfect coach mm -hmm. for a team like that. Like they're, they're they've got ugly uniforms. They're, they're, it's, a, it's an ugly state. It's uh, them against Aussies, the world. Aussies <laughs> don't like them. They, they've got a siege mentality. Jordan Crawford at 27 at the half. Sean McDonald. I mean, they had to go three guard rotation just to make sure that Ely and um, Daly didn't lock them down. It worked. McDonald is their version of the next star. That's what Scott Ross said. He's, a, he's on a DP contract. I think he had 13, 13, and 14 in the last three games. Yep. Like, that's perfect. And Magne obviously playing through some issues. The toughness that he displayed as being the only big that they can really count on and play. Uh, I'm, I'm just so impressive as a collective what they were able to do because you look at, there's quite a few other teams in the league that I think you would look at position by position are more talented than they Without are. Without a doubt. But, but you, how can you beat Hook Porty 
and yep. JLA. Yeah. And when Marcus Lee is out and he was hampered early on, Magne kept getting foul trouble mm -hmm. and he was out there on the floor. And they're just, they hung around. Great they grind and want. They really do remind me of the Perth Wildcats teams and the New Zealand Breakers teams from the, from the 10s so that just would beat you up, do whatever is necessary, and in the end, just come away with the win. Well, that's ironic because they had Mika Vicone and, and Scott Roth. <laughs> Fingerprints all over it. Now, I want to take a look at the celebrations really quick because they deserve it. The airport, they showed out for these boys when they won. But my question off the back of this is they've got the monkey off the back now. Can yeah. they win two? Can they win three? Can they win four? Because I don't see why they can't if they can keep this group together. I thought I, I thought Jordan Crawford was too small. Yep. I thought you can't win. With, you can't he win was with, for four games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought you can't win for 27 points in the first half. That caused the Melbourne United to go in and go. How do we stop him? That just opened the floor up. Milton Doyle was quiet until he needed to step up. And you, and you talk uh, about can they keep doing it? Are they going to be able to keep going with this? Well, there's a big difference between the, being the underdog and saying everybody's against us, got to defend the island, to being the title favorites mm -hmm. and saying, oh, mm -hmm. we're going to go get them. So will the same buttons being pressed work for this team? Or, you know, there's the disease of more comes through. Anytime you win something, guys are going to want more money, more shots, more everything. But for now, enjoy it. Enjoy the offseason. Yeah. You know, you can uh, choose a finger to go to the rest of Australia who is telling, uh, not, not thinking that they were good enough and uh, enjoy, enjoy it as long as it lasts. Now, if you want to make money in basketball, honestly, don't even worry about playing five on five anymore. We've decided three on three is the place to go. Casey was telling me about the money that is being made. This is the best 3x3 team that Sky could produce, right? I'm on the couch right now. I got that. We got it. Does Tommy count? Tommy, yeah, we're still. You need four. Sub. You need a sub. Brooke gets tired quickly. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm honestly, so fit. Father Time is undefeated. <laughs> Let's take a look at it really quickly, because uh, congratulations to our girls at the FIBA 3-on-3 three three, uh, Asia Cup. They looked absolutely incredible. They came second with the silver medal. But you just look through it, they were, they were there or thereabouts except for that game against Australia. Yeah. Aussie is so tough. Aussie took the gold in both um, men's and women's. Yeah, I, th I think this was in the, the crossovers, and then we got into the, uh, the actual semifinals and the finals. But a uh, fantastic job by them. Uh, it's an up-and-coming version of the game. A lot of eyeballs around it. And it's an Olympic sport. Becoming more and more professionalized, in particular in Southeast Asia. And you mentioned the money. I mean, people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that, uh, playing seasons over there. So great opportunity for, for, for the women. As McGoldrick uh, played very well. Ella Fotu, great to see her back coming off a, a, a knee injury. Uh, it, it just n nice to see them playing well. Challenged Australia, which it's always going to be tough playing against the Aussies. They've got a great uh, basketball program, a great basketball pedigree, but the, the 3x3 Tall Ferns are improving, getting to a higher level, and it, it's just fantastic to see. It obviously is an Olympic sport as well because it debuted in Tokyo 2020, uh, knee 2021, or vice versa. But it's, it's incredibly hard to qualify. It's only eight teams. Yeah. Like in men's and the women's, like mm. that's really tough. So for New Zealand to be there and thereabouts, there is a long way to go to get into Olympic qualification. But this is a great start. And if you like to shoot the ball, this is the game to play. <laughs> you, you got the green, everyone's got the green light to play. We have to be a uh, massive shout out as well to Sean Ropati. She was in the tournament team mm. uh, for this tournament, and she was just absolutely incredible. Yeah, she, she's uh, lifted her game. I, I think the last couple of years, she, you know, was a, a fringe a tall fern a, a couple of seasons ago, years ago. But I think she's more, uh, she's cons well consolidated herself in, in that spot, I think, a bit more with the way she's playing. Mm. Great strength down low uh, and very skilled as well. Mongolia. You know, Mongolia was 3x3. Who would have known? Who would have known? Mongolia. Who would have known? <laughs> hey, it's the first battle between us commentators is who is going to win the tipping ladder this year. And let's just take a quick look. Um, first of all, who picked these photos? <laughs> um, I think it's Taylor, <laughs> because that is disrespectful. Absolutely disrespectful, but... Uh, I've trimmed my beard since then. Grow the hair out, though. You switch, switch it around, <laughs> right? Switch it around. Uh, shout out to Crystal, though. Crystal and Tom were holding down with six. Casey Patience looks like... Taylor with five. Casey looks like he's a villain from a Guy Ritchie movie, actually. I think that was in my villain stage, there's no doubt about it. Tom and Kit Crystal got six, unreal. Hey, let's take a look at the feature game that we have for the Sales NBL for uh, round two. And we're gonna talk about the Rams and the Bulls, which is an interesting one for me because they both got dubs. Uh, it was a tough way of, about going about it for the Bulls, but they have a squad. We know what they have on paper. They got it done. And sometimes in round one, you just kind of have to get it done. But both teams 
uh, coming off a big win in round one. What is your take on, on what you expect to see between the Rams and the Bulls? I'll be interested to see if the Bulls can counter the real size that the Rams have, or the, that the, sorry, swap that around, that the, if the Rams can counter the true size that the Bulls have with Sam yeah. Timmons. The way he's rounding, rebounding the basketball and what he can do around the rim. Combined with that shooting, you have to respect both areas. They're also a team not at full strength just yet, uh, but, but it will be interesting to see uh, in, against a, in, a, in a tougher test, I think, against the Rams, how the Bulls react on their home court in the home opener. That is going to be fascinating because I, I always lean towards home court advantage. Mm -hmm. And a Sunday afternoon game in Franklin's is always loud. But Judd Flavel is always so well prepared. This is a new coach, a new team with the Bulls, new personnel. They got a great win on the road. That'll give them confidence. I still have to lean towards the Rams. Yeah, I mean, but I, I think I picked the, the Bulls. You got the Rams on this one? You lean towards the Rams, but you're picking the Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> I only got four last week, man. <laughs> make that make sense. How, is, is it comfortable sitting on that fence? It's not comfortable, man. <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's, it's a chain link fence as well. Uh, okay, so you got really quick before we go. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Bulls. Uh, I, li I like the Bulls in that one on their home court because of uh, the travel and with the Rams not quite at full strength yet. I'm going Bulls because I have to see them more in the season than the Rams. I'm going to lean towards <laughs> the Bulls but go with the Rams. That's what I'm going to bro. You need to help us. lock in right there. Me and you, bud. Is this uh, the most confusing segment we have? Ever. Yes. <laughs> hey, speaking of segments, shout out to Stealing Sports because I'm stoked with this. Boys, get your outfits ready. We need, we need you guys looking swagged out. This is the motivation to get it done. Be more like Alex McNaught. Have you ever seen how he rocks oh, up to a game? Yeah. He will wear Harry Potter outfits. Star uh, game Wars. Spider-Man, Star Jedi. Wars. Yeah. We were looking for outfits. We're looking for uh, whatever you can put together. Maybe talk to your social media team and say, hey, I need this posted up, but we'll hook you up with some goodies, all thanks to Sterling Sports. All right, we have to get up out of here because there is a game next. That is episode two of Sal's Hoop Heads. Done and dusted. Enjoy the Sharks and the Jets are coming up next. Woo